balancing J. Michael's basketball schedule and Sadie's dance and going from thing to thing to thing. And my folder that has like my years of everything, anytime I put something new for this class, is missing. <laughs> right, all right, done, done, done. Right? And so I was kind of freaking out a little bit. And I was like, you know, okay, Lord, you have something fresh for tonight. So it will definitely not be the same as any that you've ever experienced because I don't even have the same notes. So. But let's look at this verse. This is such a powerful verse. Mark 6, 12 and 13 says, And they went out, and they anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. What is used for that? Let's think about the things needed for that to happen. Anyone have an idea? Faith. A willingness, obedience to go out. The oil, yeah, let's think very practically. It takes oil, it takes people, right? What else does it take? Hands. Ever look at your hands? If you are a follower of Jesus, you are in this statement right here. You are one of his disciples, and just like these. He has given us the Holy Spirit, and we have oils. What a blessing and what a powerful thing. So we're going to look back on our hands a few times throughout today, because that was just really what was on my heart today, and we're going to see how that transpires. But let's start at the beginning. Would someone like to read Genesis 1, 1 through 13? Someone with a nice, big, loud voice. All right. Okay, Genesis 1. Yes, Genesis 1, 1 through 13. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw, saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, in the evening and the morning to the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it, be, let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters, which were under the firmament from the waters, which were above the and it was so, and God called the firmament heaven, and the evening, the morning, was the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the land, dry land, earth, and the gathering together of the waters called the sea. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Awesome. I like what you said. God saw that it was good. <laughs> I think we should all say that together just like that. You should feel good. Ready? And God, God saw that it was good. <laughs> I love God. And he did. Everything was good. And uh, can you imagine living in the beginning? You know? Now, I wanted to get on the same page tonight. There's all kinds of thought surrounding creation and the timetable and, you know, all of the things. There's arguments online of 
how they distilled oils, and did they have, you know, how could it be possible that they actually had essential oils in ancient times? And, you know, it depends on the source and where you're reading that will, you can kind of find sometimes what you're looking for, but there is amazing archaeology that supports the science of the Bible, that supports that this is not a story, that is not a fable. Um, God uses uh, analogies, and he uses good science and fact, right? So I don't know what you believe coming in here tonight, but I believe that men, you know, Methuselah lived 969 years. 969 is a mighty long time, right? <laughs> Can you imagine how brilliant these people were being on this and it was good earth passing that to the next generation and to the next generation and you could hear stories fresh from your great 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 i mean there's a lot of people in there and there's a lot of time so i am a very faith-filled trusting reader when i read the bible i also enjoy reading science that goes along with scripture. There's a lot out there. So I just want to encourage you tonight that if that is a conflict inside of you and you are like, you know, St. Francis of Sisi who was in a, in a quest of knowledge and support of knowledge all the time. And in the end of his life, do you know what he said? He said that, uh, this is not a direct quote, but the basic principle of what he said was that he would go back and have the faith behind it, that all of his knowledge meant nothing in comparison to the grace of God. And at the end of his life, he wanted nothing more than for people to come to know Christ with a simple, ob obedient surrender. So I don't know what you came in with tonight and what you're expecting. You know, I know sometimes people come to this class thinking, my great aunt thinks I've lost it, and then I'm into voodoo, <laughs> and I'm going to go to this class, and I'm going to get ammunition, <laughs> and over Christmas, we're gonna, I'm going to see her, and I'm going to have my scripture to support that I'm not crazy, and oils are okay. Maybe that's why you're here. Maybe you just want to take tonight and thank the Lord and worship him because of the scripture and the goodness that he's given us. That's why I'm here. I think that Everything that God made points to his gloriousness, you know? It just points to how great and good God is. And so we have these little tiny drops that are amazing, and they do such amazing things, and the science is backing it up. And that is so God. That's how God works. So I hope that we can get on the same page tonight and just listen and read and treat this tonight more like Crystal said, like a Bible study. And enjoy, and, and I just hope that the Lord does make this different tonight, and that it's not the same as it's ever been before. So, can someone else please read John 1, 1 through 5? That's awesome. Can you back up? I think it was two verses and read that last part all over again. The word gave life to everything that was created. His life brought light to everything. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness is never mm -hmm. So good. So, nothing was made without the word. And now that we have the Old Testament and the New Testament, who does the word refer to? Who has that nickname? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, you know, in the beginning, in the Old Testament, God made man 
in his image, male and female, he created them. But he said, let us make man in our image. And it shows that the triune of God has always been. And then it shows here, you know, God spoke everything into existence. And I'm going to skip at the end of this whole presentation. You're going to see lamb in it. And you may have already seen it. It's been kind of in the YouTube videos and things for a long time now. But we're going to see that even in our blood, there's little tiny crosses that hold everything together. And I just think it's so amazing, the power of the spoken word. And Christ is the word. But did you know your words have power? Yes. Every time, even a negative thought, will raise your own acidity in your pH. Did you know that? So if you're a negative person by nature, maybe life has hit you hard, and even just thinking about wondering, am I negative? I'm not negative. I mean, look at everything I've been through. I've been through, and you can think of all the reasons for being negative. I get that. But I want to encourage you tonight, as we go through this, to think on, okay, what can I use from my oils arsenal that's going to help cleanse and align me to receive the, and it was good of me that God made. So that you can walk in this world <coughs> with the very best of how you were created to be. That's our desire. That's why we see healing. That's why we see wholeness. That's why the whole world is clamoring for essential oils because we see that they are so much more powerful and more quickly powerful than synthetic man-made pharmaceuticals. Did you think about this? Jesus spoke plant life into existence. There is a life and energy that is within things that have life that you and I just can't manufacture in a science lab. We can't create that. We are not the creator without the creator because the last part of what you just read, Andrea, said that nothing was um, created that had not been made through him, right? Or something like that. And that is beautiful. So let's think about our words. Maybe that's something you can write in your march and as a little challenge for yourself. We just had the month of gratitude. Don't leave it on November 30th. You know, take it into your lifestyle. It makes a huge healing difference. All right, Ezekiel 47.12. Can someone read this? Ezekiel 47.12. This is where we're going to look at our hands again in a second. Ezekiel 47.12. Along the bank of the river, on this side and that, will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their leaves will not wither, and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month, because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food, and their leaves for medicine. Mm -hmm. Read the last phrase again. Their fruit will be for food, and their leaves for medicine. Yeah, if you want to study beyond tonight and look at the power of seeds, you know, God said that your seed, the seeds would be as meat to people before the flood. People were plant and seed eaters. We weren't eating steaks and burgers. But, um, you know, now we do. But anytime you detox, what do you go toward? You go back to nature, right? We're going to talk about that a little bit. But the leaves would be the medicine. And how powerful is that, that we can get that a little bit now? We've been doing essential oils for a while. And so, do you know the parts of a plant? My kids had to memorize this, and I'm all about hand motions. And they have um, the, the roots, right, and the stem. And they have the yeah, leaves. And the, what are these on the, you're classical people, right? Cycle two, come on. What is this? Well, yes, Bart. Um, and what is this part? Palmate. Right? Put your hand out. What does that look like? Yeah. What part of the tree looks the, more, the most like your palm? The leaf. And we just read that disciples could lay hands on people and pray in faith and see them healed with anointing them with oil and speaking 
the prayer of faith, right? Do you see how it comes together? Okay, so in this particular verse, the word healing is only, the background to that verse is only translated that way one time in the entire Bible. And um, the word comes, as, I don't, I'll butcher pronouncing these things, but it's T-E-R-U-P-H-A-H. -H. And it comes from R-U-P-H, roof, maybe, which means rock, or we've gotten the word Rafa. Have you ever heard of a ministry called Rafa? A lot of um, counseling ministries and healing ministries, right? Well, the word Rafa means healer or physician and is often used as one of the names of God. If any of you have children and you want to do a great Advent, you know what I'm doing with my kids this whole month? We're going through a new name of God every day to lead up to Jesus being born for the Advent calendar. How exciting. A, Almighty God, December 1st. You know? So maybe you could do that. Make yourself some little notes. You can find these things online. But the word Rafa means healer or physician. And it's combined with rock. And who's the rock? Jesus. Do you see it? Even in Ezekiel 37, 12. So God is revealing that true healing comes through the rock as the ultimate Rafa or healer. And everything is spoken, created through him. So let's go on to the next slide. The first time that essential oils are mentioned in the Bible is the oil is myrrh, and it's the story of Joseph and his brothers. Who knows the story of Joseph and the coat of many colors, right? Were his brothers so jealous? Yes. Why were they jealous that he had this special coat? <laughs> he was his father's favorite. What was the difference between all of his brothers at that point and Joseph? The mother. His mother was his father's love, right? And all of the others came from Leah, who God blessed with lots of sons because she really got the raw deal <laughs> in that whole situation. <laughs> that woman, my heart just breaks when I read those stories, right? So Joseph was so chosen and favored by his father, and his brothers were jealous, and it did not help any that he decided to tell them about the dream where they were all weak bowing down to him. That was not very smart, he was a little immature on that one. So what did they do? They threw him in a well, because they thought they would kill him, and then they're like, no, we're not gonna kill him, let's just put him in a well, that's not so bad, <laughs> right? Well, then, what happened? A caravan came by, and he got slave trade. Do you know what they were carrying in that caravan? Myrrh. Let's pass around myrrh. We gotta sell some myrrh. Myrrh is ten percent off with Doterra this one. Okay, so you know, Jesus, don't turn over the table. I'm just joking. Okay, so here's the cool thing. Myrrh, who has the emotions book? Do you know what myrrh is emotionally? Do you have that book? Does anyone have it memorized? <laughs> Murmurized? <laughs> yes, it is. It's, it's when the soul's relationship has a severing with the maternal bond. Can you imagine Joseph being sold into slavery and not just leaving his brother and his father, but he, he never saw his mom again. And they were close. And so he gets picked up on this caravan and it's full of myrrh. How gracious that not only God would do that, but he would record it so that we could be in this class tonight going, wow, God is into every intricate detail. And how amazing is that? And myrrh is mentioned again. And it's when Joseph became the second in control and he got them through the famine, and he's in Egypt, and then the brothers, you know, they're getting really low on their food, and the dad says, we gotta go get some help, where they're divvying out the food. <laughs> right, I'm sorry, this is not <laughs> translation. This is me, just talking to kids, okay? <laughs> Every one of us is like a big kid tonight. Okay, so they get there, and he says, well, we want favor, so we should take gifts. 
And guess what? They took to Joseph, not knowing it was Joseph, as a gift of favor and blessing. <laughs> Myrrh. Isn't that so cool? Yeah, there's so much in that whole story. Read it. I'm not going to go into it anymore. I'll be here all night. I'm already way, like, going slow. So read the story of Joseph. Think about how cool it is that God recorded myrrh. And now that we know what we know about myrrh, it's even more exciting. Because how many times, raise your hand if you read your Bible and you just skipped over Cassia and myrrh and all these words that you didn't really care about. Who's done that in your life? Right. Now what do you do? When you see one of those words, you see aloes and you see sandalwood and you see cypress, you're like, <gasps> and if you're a mom, you go home school like I am, I'm like, kids, smell this. This is what the ark smells like. You know? And you're like, this is so cool, baby mom. You know? But it's just amazing that we can do that and have a little bit more knowledge. Yeah. Okay, I might not remember to do this later, but Rose. Okay, Rose, is that amazing? Okay, what is another name, nickname of Jesus? Rose of, Rose of Sharon. What's so special and spectacular about Rose? What makes it so expensive? Yeah, it takes a zillion petals, right? <laughs> exactly a zillion <laughs> to create a little bottle of Rose. But what happens when roses, they have to get crushed, and he was crushed for our iniquities, and he was bruised for our transgression, and by his stripes we are healed. He is the rose of Sharon. When you put rose on, you can think in the day, this is how I bring the Bible and oils into my life. I might be crushed, but I'm going to be fragrant. <laughs> right? And I am not going to be like a crushed, stinky onion. I am going to be like a rose. And let worship in spite of my pain reach the heavens. Because that's what God created me for. So when you put on your rose, remember that. It is so therapeutic. Rose is so healing. And when you put it on, thank the Lord for his invaluable gift of Jesus. All right, we're going to search through a few more scriptures. The Bible has essential oils referred to over a thousand times. There's um, another book by Erica McNeil. She refers to things. Um, anyway, what they use from the plants would have included essential oils. So some of them are actually talking about essential oils. Some are talking about the plants, but still, we can read it and be excited, <laughs> right? Because today, through cold pressing, through steam distillation, and this is what I was gonna say, they found a clay pot that dates to 5,000 BC, somewhere between 5,000 and 6,000 BC, that is set up with, I mean, it was just, you can look it up online. It was for steam distillation. And they heated the river water, and they, it was so cool. So it's been done. That's why I'm saying Methuselah, 969 years old, I think they knew things. I think sometimes we think we're so smart in today's science, but if somebody told you that we would have the technology that we have today, would you have believed them 20 years ago? It would have been like the Jetsons, right? Um, so when John saw the vision and he's talking about locusts in the sky, he didn't know what an airplane was or a helicopter. So you've got to be really careful to read scripture with an openness of Holy Spirit, speak to me. You tell me, I am not a know-it-all. And we've got to go to Jesus and to the scriptures like we're not know-it-alls because then we'll see the goodness. If we feel like we know too much, we're in trouble. All right, so some little things to consider. References to essential oils and or plants that produce them 1,031 times. 33 different species of essential oils. 70%, which is 
46 out of 66 books of the Bible mention essential oils and or the aromatic plants from which they derive. 191 times the word oil is used <coughs> in the King James Version. Olive oil is specifically named. So there's lots of good, 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 good stuff in there. So let's look at the next slide. It says olive oil and essential oil. Olive oil is frequently mentioned in the Bible as olives are plentiful in the regions where the biblical history took place. Olive oil can still be used as a carrier oil for essential oil, as can other oils. Who loves our fractionated coconut oil, though? Mm -hmm. I love it because it doesn't sour and it doesn't interfere with any of the aromas. It's, there's no aroma to it. It's just really beautiful, and it doesn't stay greasy. It just really gets nice and absorbed in your skin. Anyway, um, here's a couple of numbers to consider. Oil appears 191 times, but only seven of those times is specifically referring to olive oil. So as I said, 191, seven is referring specifically to olive oil. Do you think there's talking about other oils in the Bible? I think so. In 147 of the 191 references, olive oil could be inferred as the species that the writer had in mind. But if you want to learn more information on olive oil, the other healing oil of the Bible, um, there is information out there. And I would encourage you to do the research. There's a lot of great research right now on whether or not your own olive oil is good olive oil. Look at the brands, because there's a lot of olive oil that is not even good olive oil. So, but you can find that on another night besides tonight. Um, so in Luke 10, 34, it talks about pouring in oil and wine, and the word E-L-I-O-N implies that there's an olive oil base, but there's aromatic oils that were used with it as a custom of that time. It was not uncommon for travelers to carry a quantity of wine containing myrrh along with a flask of olive oil wherever they went. So lots of good stuff there. What is an essential oil? Let's plow through this as fast as we can so we don't have to take time on this. Someone tell me what an essential oil is. Excellent. A volatile, natural, aromatic compound. Steam distilled or cold pressed. Powerful, safe, beneficial. 70 times more potent than dried herbs. How do we use them? Aromatically, topically, and with doTERRA, we have the blessing of being able to use them internally. We have the highest quality essential oils in the world. Just frankincense. If you watch the videos on YouTube of doTERRA's frankincense, you can see the quality. And what we're doing for simoleons, did you know that the frankincense trail, run this down, look it up on the line. You can actually see aerial views of the frankincense trail where it, it's all through that region and year after year and thousands of years we're talking. The carrying of frankincense left this trail that today is like Oman and Somalia, but you can still see it. It's amazing. That's a really cool thing to look at. But with doTERRA, we don't cheat the people doing all the work. Those men leave their homes and families for five months to work with those frankincense um, trees to scrape the resin. And what's really cool, myrrh, resin oils like myrrh and frankincense, they are separated by color. And the darkest ones have, you know, it's like if you cut, um, a tree and it oozes, <laughs> right? That's like trying to heal itself, right? Well, the frankincense is that. It's like this resin that is trying to heal the tree. People from the Somalia area who have wanted to take advantage of those people have been taking advantage of the trees by cutting too often and you ruin the trees. doTERRA has gone in to so many places and set the standards high, where they said, you know what, we are not going to damage the tree to the point where it causes death to the tree. We want um, sustainability. Oh, thank you. So 
they've taught the farmers and they've taught these gatherers how to do it right. And then the, the sap that's the closest to the tree is almost clear. And that's the best quality. Guess what goes into our frankincense? It's from a few different kinds of frankincense trees. We actually have a blend. But it's all that right next to the tree resin. It's the lightest color. It's the highest quality. And then doTERRA has told those gatherers, you can sell the other stuff off however you want. We just want the good stuff. <laughs> and so I just, I love our company. I love the integrity. I love that we have been about renewing. I mean, Somalians, what are they known for? Yeah, piracy, war. Did you see that movie with Tom Hanks where he got kidnapped in the boat and all the, that's so scary. And that's, you know, today's world. And we are changing entire generations in the future of Somalian men who are being respected, they're getting paid what they deserve, and even more. And we're part of that. So this month, when you get your free frankincense, thank God for the Somalians and pray for their lives, pray for their homes, pray for their families, because we're changing the world. One frankincense at a time. Like, truly, it's, it's amazing. So we have all of our plants from around the world, and you can look up on the map and see how and where they come from. And of course, there's all kinds of grades of essential oils. We love the CPTG, <laughs> all the testing that happens, right? So we have pure, safe, potent. Our phrase that we hear all the time now, and it's hit John Hopkins and all of the medical world, is that doTERRA is the most tested, most trusted. So when you need medicinal value and therapeutic benefit, we have nothing better. And tonight we even get to talk about the fact that we have Jesus too. So, I mean, that's awesome. The Terra as a wellness lifestyle, the base, we've got to start by eating right and taking care of ourselves. If I had, I love whiteboards and scribbling and doodling when I teach, and I almost brought my whiteboard, but I knew I would like, we'd be here four hours. So we're not going to do that. But I want you to imagine a bullseye, okay, a big circle, and then there's another circle in it, and then there's another circle in it, or like your eyeball, okay? We're going to see a picture in a few slides of the temple. Remember the Old Testament? They would travel around the temple and set it up, and they would camp out for days, <laughs> <laughs> My language is so, I'm not, I'm not meaning to be disrespectful. If you are a Bible scholar, just know I'm not using the big fancy words tonight. <laughs> is that it? No, no. Anyway, so they would put up the temple and the Lord's presence would visit and meet with them. But where was the Lord's presence? In the inner courts, in the Holy of Holies, right? We're going to talk about that from a Bible perspective. But on this slide right now, when you look at the doTERRA wellness lifestyle pyramid, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Are you taking care of your temple? If the Holy Spirit is going to use your hands to go and to touch and heal people, we got to look at our roots here. we got to say, all right, how am I doing with my nutrition? Am I active? And how, how is my rest and stress management? Is that out of order? Reducing toxic load. You know, I've got my informed self-care. Am I taking care of myself with new, um, natural things before I just go to the pharmacy? So we have this huge blessing, but it is a journey. And so remember I said to look at the eyeball with that. The outer is your body, right? The next circle, kind of where your iris is, the colored part of your eye, that's your soul. So you've got your mind, which is your logic and your imagination. There's different parts in how you think, right? You can imagine things, but you can also think very logically and reasonably. You have your will. That's where you choose what you're going to do. And you have your emotions. And your emotions, if you just let your soul rule you without taking control in this lifestyle or live style, how you live, think about your temple of the Holy Spirit. Are you going to be like this emotionally? Is your diet going to make you like this, right? 
So those choices in the mind and the will and the emotions is very important. And then the pupil, your inner part of your eye, there's a verse in scripture that says that the eye is what? The lamp of the body. And when the eye is full of light, the whole body is full of light. And when the eye is full of darkness, how great is that darkness? So I wrote down this word that jumped out at me whenever Andrea was reading that verse about the word. He was the light, right? Think of the word pupil. What is a pupil? A student. What if your inner posturing every day said, I want, I want to be a pupil and surrender so that the Holy Spirit would fill me with light and penetrate my thoughts, my emotions, my decisions, my wellness lifestyle, so that my body is a fit place for the Holy Spirit to dwell on this earth. I hope that gives the wellness lifestyle pyramid a little bit more of a importance in our lives. So diets don't change, or diets do change, I hope. Genes don't. So we, this is a whole class on itself. I won't dwell here, but pre-agricultural period, there was a huge amount of micronutrient intake. Now look at that <laughs> cliff. We're down there. We've got industrial food. I have to tell my daughter, did God make mac and cheese? Or did man make mac and cheese? And she'll say, man made mac and cheese. And they'll say that we need to live in our mac and cheese. <laughs> because that's how we weigh everything in our house. Did God make it? Did man make it? Let's eat more of what God made. And some of what man made. I'm not going to be ridiculous. I've got a 10-year-old, right? and a 14-year-old who eats all the time. <laughs> but we do, we need to take this seriously. So gear up for December, for January, February, March. January, February, March. We are going to rule the body part of ourselves, and we are going to take control of our cleansing and our getting ourselves in order. Because you know what? When your physical body starts to wake up, you sleep better at night, you're more clear, even your Bible reading is more awake. It's awesome. Your conversations with God get a little better. All right, so health benefits. LLB. How many of you are on the LLB? Raise your hand. They're fantastic. <laughs> so good. They do all those things. Okay, the oil of joy, oil of gladness is mentioned in scripture. We're going to pass around elevation so you can smell some joy. <laughs> God made our noses to be wired differently from all of our other senses. Our noses, oh, our noses. We store memory. There is a series of little tiny bones called the ethmoid bone right behind your nasal cavity. And it's actually porous. It's more like spongy, that little holes in spaces. When you breathe something in, guess what's on the back side of the ethmoid bone area? Your brain, right? So when you breathe toxicity, it's going to your brain. When you breathe in the chemicals of these amazing oils, they do have a powerful effect on your emotions through your brain. Molecules from aroma have access directly to the emotional center of the brain where memories and emotions are stored. All right, can someone read Proverbs 27, 9. Someone else look up Isaiah 63 or 61, 3. And someone else look up Hebrews 1, 9. Proverbs 27, 9. This is lotions and fragrance, the essential of the light, the sweet friendship, and refreshment of the soul. I can hear it. You say it one more time. Oh, sorry. No, you're great. Just as lotions and fragrance, the essential delight, a sweet friendship refreshes the soul. Do you hear me? Yes. 
The distance from Roma gives delight, sweet friendship refreshes the soul. So that's joy in two areas. You can smell joy all day long, but you better be a friend, <laughs> or you're not going to take refreshment <laughs> where you go. Okay, what was the next one? Isaiah 61 3. Okay. And provide for those who dream of dying to the snow and were crowned with beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of spirit of despair. And we call hopes of righteousness, the praying of the Lord, his way in his feet. I love that so much. I memorized that when I was in high school and always thought, oh, I just love that. And Jesus brought that, and I want others to receive that. Um, but in the last two years of walking out grief myself, holy cow, those words. Yeah. The oil of joy. Read that section of it again. The oil of joy is the Yeah. Joy isn't just, hey, I'm so happy. <laughs> it is a deep wellspring of the power of the Holy Spirit bringing about a steady course, an anchor to the soul, and as a result, joy comes. And two weeks ago, leading up to Thanksgiving, I had a day when I was like, really, I've been asking myself for two years, is there anything in me that's mad at God? Those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, my husband passed away two years ago. And he was over-medicated, so it's, there's all kinds of layers there. But I asked the Lord during worship, I was thinking about the month of gratitude and, oh, we're so thankful for all the things, and Scripture says, be thankful in all things. And so I sat there praying, and I said, Lord, I'm not thankful for this. I, and as I verbalized that, I realized that even though I've been saying, oh, I'm so not mad at God, I, I love God so much, I'm not mad at God, I was mad at God. I was like, for, for a little minute, I admitted that I was really angry that this stinks. The end of this really stinks. And so I sat there, kind of said, okay, Lord, you need, to, you need to speak to me on what, how to be thankful when I'm not. That was my, and this is where that joy, it's so much not happy, happy, it's the Lord. And this is what happened throughout that day, hours of me just sort of, the word meditate, the word comes from like chewing cud. So I was like, okay, Lord, I'm going to chew on this. I'm going to spit it back up again, <laughs> digest it, and spit it back up again. And so you give me the nutritional value that I need in this moment. I need to be grateful, and I don't know how. And by the end of the day, <laughs> my husband was amazing. We were married for 19 years, but we knew each other for a few months more than that. <laughs> right? We dated for three and a half months and we were engaged for five and a half weeks. So, very fast. So, well, about 20 years ago, so, right? Sort of. So, it was like the Lord said, Why do you think I had Michael love you so extravagantly on the front end? I was like, Oh, I have a lot to be thankful for. And then I'm in these groups now online of people who have been harmed with way little medicine compared to those medicines that they gave my husband. And they are suicidal and in pain all the time and have lost such capabilities. And when I think about what state Mike would probably be in right now, I was like, oh, but the grace of God. And I was thankful. But I also have a joy, which is an eternal perspective that God will make beauty from ashes rise, and that he has risen to show us that we will rise too, and that Mike is risen and cheering us on. How, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, there, my husband is one of those witnesses, and Moses, and David, and grandma so-and-so. I mean, we are surrounded by people who have loved the Lord and are with the Lord. And you know what they're saying to us? They're saying, if you can see what I see now, 
you wouldn't let that bother you. If you could see what I see, you would get yourself up and walk with your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of your faith who has purpose for your life. And I, I, I just visualize that all the time. I imagine all the time. And Mike's like, I'm so proud of you. You did a really good job. Or, <laughs> or like, come on, you can totally do this. Don't worry. You know, even on my way here tonight, I'm like, I don't have any notes. I'm not praying to Mike, I'm praying to Jesus. I'm like, I don't have any notes. But I almost can see Mike sitting in the passenger seat looking at me with his little tilted smile, like, you know you're just going to start talking, and the Holy Spirit will take over. And it's like, yeah, that's what God does. So we just need a good perspective shift all the time, and joy sustains us. And here's our amazing cells. All right. This is so cool. Our bodies have approximately 75 to 100 trillion cells. Each cell has six gigabytes of memory. I don't know how they figured that out. <laughs> but considering all of our cells, this is more memory than all of the computers and <coughs> smartphones in the world put together. Okay, so you have a very smart cellular structure. And those approximately 100 trillion cells that are at work inside of you, work together, communicate together, have a purpose and a plan of action. Oh no, Crystal has a cough. Let's work together and let's work to heal her. Like we are so put together for the body to heal itself if given the right and it was good environment. So since we're so far away from and it was good, how awesome that we have nutritional supplements and essential oils and prayer and wise choices that we can use in our lives to equip ourselves for the better. It's awesome. So how do our cells communicate? Our nervous system has electrical pulses. Think about this. How many of you remember science class when you were a kid and you learned about an atom? And what are the parts of an atom Yes. What's the part that spins all around it? It's the electron, right? Can scientists make electrons? No. So there is this life force in us that is at work that we cannot imitate. And our hormones and our nervous system work together. Um, we have things called <laughs> cell receptor sites. We've got these receptor sites. And I thought about that on the way here too. And I thought, I want clear and aligned receptors in my life, spiritually and cellularly. <laughs> so when you're eating a good meal and when you're taking good care of your rest, add into your prayer life, Lord, when I'm putting on this myrrh, which is a great cleansing um, oil, clean my receptor sites. Help me to be receptive. I want to be a student, right? So our body, when we are sick or when our the cell receptor sites are all mucked up, our cells can't communicate. And the body malfunctions, resulting in sickness. So God's amazing essential oils have 40 with 19 zeros, okay? That word is pronounced 40 million trillion. There's probably another science or a mathematical word that I probably can't pronounce. But we'll just say 40 million trillion molecules. Essential oil molecules are tiny, itty bitty. This is why they can pass through the cell membrane, right? We always talk about that in our classes. We're so excited about that. Woo! -hoo! Yay! This is why. Think about that. 40 million trillion molecules, or more it says, in each drop of essential oil. That means, if you do math, that for one drop of peppermint, when you pass that peppermint around, it does this, and, oh, they're so nice. Um, that one drop of peppermint has given your 40 million trillion, that was 40 million trillion molecules, has given your 100 approximately trillion cells 400,000 molecules per cell. So we have like 
armies. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty awesome. And that's why they can affect our, even our DNA. So this is my favorite slide. This is the whole point of all that that we just talked about. Everybody say, phenyl propanoids. <laughs> Try it one more time. Phenyl propanoids. Now say scrubbing bubbles, because that's easier. Phenyl propanoids. And this, can you hold up the science wheel? Yeah, that might be the motion ones, but there's another one that's the science wheel. Um, get one of those. If you're sciencey and you want to know, they've already done the science for us and they put it in a colorful wheel. And so whenever you know my body receptor sites need to be scrubbed, I'm going to look at the phenol propanoids and things that fall into that category and choose my oils wisely. Sesquiterpenes come into the cell. Delete, 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 delete. It's kind of like a backspace bar. You get your cell receptor sites cleaned off of those little scrubbing bubbles. And then when myrrh, which is extremely high in sesquiterpenes, is put into your life, you know, we use myrrh for all kinds of things, gums and teeth and health that way. And you know, thyroid support, and there's so many ways that you can use myrrh. But it's going delete, 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 delete. Think about Joseph needing <coughs> delete, 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 because he needed to have the right heart in spite of his circumstance. And then monoterpenes, frankincense is huge in monoterpenes. Frankincense is very well known in church services and in churches, you know, Thousands of years, people have used frankincense in ceremonial worship. If you go to a, a church where people go to the altar and they're anointed with oil and prayed over a lot of times, even way before doTERRA, that's probably why frankincense smells familiar to you. It reminded me immediately of my great aunt Janine's church again prayed over as a kid. Think about monoterpenes and praying over a person. Help restore, help restore, restore, reprogram. Restore, reprogram this life, these cells, this person. So you get all these things going with prayer and the spoken word, and we've got a huge arsenal. Isn't God's creation amazing? Yeah. So I think that's good. There's some great words that talk about healing. Therapuo is often used, and it means a gradual healing. What word can you think of when you see that word? Therapy. If someone says, you need therapy, <laughs> you're thinking, uh, that's going to take a long time, right? You may need therapy. You know, we can be therapy for one another, right? So therapy is to restore health. We need to be therapuo with our wellness plan, okay? I don't know how to say this next word. Anybody a scholar here that can read it? It's IMI, IMI, AMI, something like that. But that's an instant healing to make whole. Wouldn't that be the one you want all the time? Yes. Okay, and then sozo is a spiritual healing or a restoration. And they each take, um, <coughs> carry an idea of complete restoration to a state of health, but over different periods of time. And the sozo in scripture actually is like rescued and snatched out of the fire, out of a flame. That's the kind of sozo. Someone else, the power of God, came and rescued you when you could not heal yourself. Like, that word is the one used for the demon-possessed boy. He needed to be snatched and rescued from the demons. And Jesus healed him sozo. That's awesome. So Therapuo is meant in its original form, take your hands again, to serve. So you are carrying that Therapuo everywhere you go. And are we willing to walk alongside the person that takes a really long time? <laughs> Got it. God has nothing but love for them. We get so impatient sometimes, don't we? So 
That word is used 43 times in, get this, the New Testament. That kind of makes me wonder if you can't be that without the Holy Spirit, without the presence of Jesus and his power at work in you. So to heal, you could also say to serve. God is not served, therapeo, by human hands. You may know that scripture? That's Acts. Yeah. Matthew used the word when linking the healing ministry of Jesus to Isaiah 53, 5. By his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we are served into a healing journey. You know? It's awesome. So the I am I, meaning to make whole or to heal, was used at least 22 times to describe a physical healing and several times to describe figuratively spiritual healing. Um, somebody want to <coughs> read Matthew 13, 15? <clears throat> Someone else can look up John 12, 40. We'll look up one more. 1 Peter 2, 24. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. Their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Mm -hmm. The next verse. Now I want you to read that again. Listen to that as you know in the end it's going to be so that I would heal them. But we're really looking at so that I would make them whole. So then look at what's before it as, okay, so that I will make them whole, what so that? It's all that stuff before it. So now listen to it very, really carefully of what all that is, so that I will make them whole. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Yeah. Do you ever feel dull spiritually? Do you ever feel like, oh, I just, I'm not quickened like I once was with the Lord. It's just kind of, you know, it's, I remember hearing someone say one time, the, the Holy Spirit is always, saying, go to the Word. And when we're, when we're in the lifestyle of that, right, we hear it very clearly, go to the Word, go to the Word, go to the Word. But if I let my time and my busyness and everything, it sounds more like, pretty soon, it's, the Holy Spirit is still saying it, but I'm dull to hearing it because I have occupied myself. And then what happens? Have you ever had a moment where you pull out your Bible and you get into it again? And you're like, oh, why didn't I do this sooner? Uh, and then you're like, thank you, because immediately the Lord is speaking to you again. He doesn't want his voice to be dull in your life. He wants to make you whole. Okay, what other ones did I pass out? John 12, 40? Is that what you just said? No, I already mentioned you. Okay. He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that they can neither see with their eyes nor understand with their hearts to return, and I will heal. So there again, it is. You have to crave something. Sometimes you're, you're in a state of being dull because you need to crave more. And as soon as you do, you turn in that direction, and the Lord gets all those receptor sites cleaned off spiritually. Right, and you hear his voice again. And then the other one was 1 Peter 2, 24. Okay. okay. He, Jesus himself, bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. I will do it. Yeah. I was thinking about that verse this afternoon <laughs> because I was thinking, the Lord hung him on a tree. You know, everywhere we go. And remember, we held out our palms, and by his wounds, we are healed, whether it was his palms or his wrists, whatever. But his hands bear the scars that 
His wounds gave us life. And we get that all the time from plants. This is a constant daily analogy of Jesus if we let it be. Like I said about the rose, thank you that the rose of Sharon was crushed for my iniquity and bruised for my transgression, that by his stripes I am healed. Thank you that he didn't leave it up to me, but the leaf or the life came to me through his wounds. So you don't have to look very far in your life daily to use your oils and meditate on the Lord. And one time, when I first got into oils, I was looking at all this stuff. And I got addicted. Did you get addicted to your books and your online materials when you first became an oiler? Raise your hand. Yes. Well, the kids and I were doing a devotional one morning, and it kind of went like this. We're talking about the Ark of the Covenant in the presence of God, going everywhere that they took the temple, you know, set up in the Ark of the Covenant. All that. People who touched it died. And it was a big time. This whole story, Ark of the Covenant, presence of God, nothing to mess around with. Well, the neighboring people groups were like, they have something we don't have. We want that magic thing. So the ark was stolen. What did God do? Yeah, they were cursed. So then it became like a hot potato. I don't want it, but we don't want it. Nobody wants it because people were cursed and receiving the flip opposite of what the presence of God was doing in the Israelites. And it went through five neighboring people groups before it got back to the Israelites where it belonged. And so I'm talking to the kids about how amazing this story is, and I said, so what are some idols in your life? And we're talking about, oh, watching too much TV or whatever. And I just felt the Lord go, a central oil house. <laughs> to me. And it was like, do not mistake the ark for the presence. Do not worship the oils. Keep your eyes on me. I am the healer. I am the creator of life. I use the oils, but the oils are not magical and they are not God. And I was like, oh, okay. Thank you for that. Because I really was getting a little out of control. I was so excited about my oils. <laughs> so, ponder. Interesting things. Hopefully I've gave you, given you, hopefully I gave you many interesting things <coughs> to ponder tonight. So let's think about and examine the following points. How long have we had essential oils? Thousands of years. What is the biblical meaning of the word anoint? It actually comes from a word mesach, which means massage. Pretty awesome. Who were the original healers in Bible times? <laughs> yeah, the priests. And now in the New Testament, it says that we are priests and kings and heirs, right? In what other ways were oils referenced in the Bible? Lots of them. So fragrances. <coughs> of essential oils over in the Garden of Eden. The biblical meaning of anoint, the Hebrew word masak. This is where that word right there, masak, is the word in the beautiful Psalm 23. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I heard a guy speaking on the verbiage behind all of this and what it originally meant. And a table was a shepherd would have sheep and along the side of mountains there would be called a table where it was a safe pasture. And the Lord would, has prepared safe pasture areas for us. And um, that's really beautiful. But right now reading it, I'm like thinking of my Roman touch table. <laughs> right? I put people right on the table and I pray over them and anoint them, I give a clinically, clinical application of essential oils and pray over them. But from a figurative standpoint, every single day, 
What if you said, Lord, that mind part of my soul, massage my mind with you so that I'm not thinking on what junk gets me a negative, on a negative path. What if, I, what if you said, get your hand in there, God, massage my mind with oil. Oil represents the Holy Spirit. Think of Jesus crushed. And then what? The oil pours out in our lives. We would not have the Holy Spirit without the cross, without the crushing of Jesus in our behalf. So another thing that I think is amazing is that Jesus died on a hill called Golgotha. Does anyone know what Golgotha means? The place of the skull. So is it appropriate to say, Holy Spirit, massage my mind. You gave your life on the place of the skull. I want the mind of Christ. Do you know you can have the mind of Christ at work in your life? You can. You, you can. And the helmet of salvation, right? There's all these, the breastplate of righteousness, outflowing from our mind and our will and our emotions through what? <clears throat> Being a pupil. Surrender. Your most powerful posture every single day and night and at night when you can't sleep, no matter when, your most powerful posture is on your knees. Because when you're in surrender, the Lord says, in your weakness, I can be made perfect. And I'd much rather have that then think I'm all that bag of chips. Because I can't accomplish what the Lord can in people's lives. So what if you took your business that way? What if you were surrendered on your knees and you were like, okay, so she signed up with someone else. That's okay, I'm going to let it go. <laughs> because the Lord ordains my steps and hers or his, and I'm going to stay at a point of surrender and trust. That God knows the end from the beginning. I don't know why I threw that, that out there. But now the next one shows this awesome picture of the tabernacle. You've got your inner holy holies. You have your outer court, right? Then you've got that. And so that in your body, that's where all of your outside, it doesn't have to be part of the family to affect your body. We have pollutants all around us and whatnot, right? We've got processed foods. But in that, inside the tent, not the Holy of Holies, but in it, that's, think about that. Your mind, your will, and your emotions get messed up by the people that you're the closest to. Your coworkers, your family members, they have access just a little bit further into your life. And that's where your choices get hard. I'm going to let my emotions rule me or my thoughts rule me. No, I'm going to go to the center and ask that I am a surrendered person and the Lord is receiving a fragrant aroma from my life, filling me with his Holy Spirit to give me power with all those people around me that I have a hard time with so that I am the hands and feet of Jesus and a good, nice person, <laughs> right? And then where you walk, you are the light. You're carrying the light of Christ and you radiate. Here's a little um, <laughs> anointing oil. Yeah, this is the actual recipe from the Bible for 500 shekels of myrrh, cinnamon, calamus, cassia, olive oil. We go till eight tonight. Is that <laughs> at least okay? <laughs> I just go over all these oils, but I mean, you can learn all about them. You have the tools. Okay, so the anointing oil it formed an integral part of the ordination of priesthood for a high priest. Um, it was a dedication, a consecration, a vital part of worship. Did you know though, that when Daniel fasted, he also fasted from anointing oil, which I thought was profound, which showed an even higher level of trust. I think maybe God told him, don't worship the ark, worship the presence in that moment. So sometimes 
you may need to fast from your oils and get things right with the Lord. You know, if they're in the way, then get them going again. Just the thought. Okay, pouring out the anointing oil. Psalm 133 talks about where it ran down the beard of Aaron, and there's a lot of symbolism there. Basically, it was consecrating the entire man, the whole person, even the beard. <laughs> now we have recipes for the beard oil, right? 31 days of Christmas. Um, the word even, Aaron's beard, introduced by our translators, weakens the force and beauty of the comparison. The psalmist had the simple image of Aaron. The word even, Aaron's beard, was added later. It, just, it went all over Aaron and his beard. Take it. It went everywhere. There's no even this and that. It was just a whole man was consecrated. Literally to the mouth of his garment, head to toe. And for us, that means united. United in Christ and united with one another. Reaching every limb. Think of the body of Christ, right? We want anointing through the whole body. There's lots of cross-references. If you want to look any of this up, take a picture. This is where Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. Talk about King David. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. Oftentimes, there's oil and that consecration, that ordained purposes for future times. The Lord sets the person apart. The Christmas story, obviously... It's good enough for baby Jesus, it's good enough for me. That's my kids used to say. The Christmas story, Matthew 2, that's where that is. And you get to read about the beautiful gifts of frankincense, gold, and myrrh. Um, I take the fractionated coconut oil, and I'll put just a whole one of those, um, 10 to 20 drops of frankincense, myrrh, and sandalwood, and I keep that in my bathroom. And that's my after a shower blend because those synergistically bring out the best in each other. There's more that frankincense and myrrh do when mixed together than either one do on their own. God made them very special to work together. And I actually pulled up some things online about that, but I probably won't have time to read it. King size bed. Look at that little cute little manger. Cute little manger. It's a feeding trough. That is not a cute anything, right? <laughs> it's only cute because we think you're the baby Jesus in there. It's a feeding place. But Jesus, think about that. The God of the universe became dependent on humanity. It's amazing. Obviously, though, these gifts were meant for a king, and they knew who Jesus was, is, and always will be. Frankincense is the king of oils. And anciently, over 3,000 tons of frankincense were exported on that frankincense trail. To look that up, like I said, it's amazing. Here's what a frankincense tree looks like. And then this is what the resin looks like. You are talking about that. You've probably seen it. If you haven't, look up the videos that doTERRA has put out because they're really wonderful. These men leave for five months and they hang off ledges on cliffs and scrape that stuff. It's very, very dangerous. The frankincense resins are split into the different colors for quality. All right, it's also termed the oil of Lebanon because Lebanon was a place where the resin was sold. So if you see oil of Lebanon in scripture, it's talking about frankincense. Frankincense was valued more than gold and symbolized divinity, was chosen to anoint newborn sons of kings and priests used in worship, used as a medicinal treatment, worn as a perfume. It was known as an anointing oil or a cure-all and was thought to assist one in the transition of death and also was used for embalming and perfume. So this was used, and it's mentioned in scripture, as well as myrrh, at the birth of Jesus and when Joseph of Arimathea had the place for his body to be embalmed and put to rest. Frankincense, you can take a screen of this if you want, but you can look it up in all of your books and online. When in doubt, use frankincense. Just break it out. <laughs> I like things to rhyme. And then myrrh. This is a picture of myrrh. Looks a lot like frankincense, doesn't it? They're like twinsies, but they're very different 
in their chemistry. Like I said, one, and that was the thing. If you just remember this one thing, I've referred to wanting to be cleansed and aligned. That phrase right there, that's what, when you combine frankincense and myrrh, that's what it does. With all that scrubbing bubbles and sesquiterpenes and those big words, basically something where you need cleansing and realignment. The two work together for that purpose. So use them together. They're great. The gift of myrrh was extremely valuable. I love this. Pregnant mothers use it to prevent disease. After childbirth, they used it to heal stretch marks, but this is the best part. They were customarily putting myrrh on umbilical cords of newborns to protect from infection, which also symbolically meant to cut off generational curses. Imagine if you were born and they put myrrh on you and prayed for you <laughs> for that. Wouldn't you love that? Do you ever carry like generations on you and you're like, Lord, get the myrrh going. I've seen myrrh do amazing things combined with prayer for my generational stuff. And I've seen some major healing with my own mother, thanks to myrrh and the Lord. Okay, myrrh has powerful cleansing properties, great for the mouth and throat, it's great for skin, <coughs> great for digestive needs, great for the C word, we're not allowed to say. Frankincense and myrrh are gifts for kings. The gifts speak of Christ himself. Um, you can read that guy, Vernon McGee's Insights, if you want. Cedar wood is mentioned in the Bible. Egyptians 5,000 years ago used it for embalming and disinfectant and other medicinal purposes. Great insect propellant. King Solomon's temple smelled like cedar wood. The Cedars of Lebanon. Spikenard. Do you want to pass around Spikenard? Spikenard. Oh, so good. Do you know that Spikenard emotionally is the oil of gratitude? Why didn't we know that for November? I just looked that up today. Because we need to carry it into December when we're around all over our family. So get the spike in our belly. I'm so thankful for that present. I'm not gonna re-gift it. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, spike nard, costly, rare. Spike nard is Hebrew, means light, genuine and pure. Aren't you more thankful when you're genuinely full of light and buoyancy? Spike nard was also used to anoint Jesus just days before his death. I'm sure he needed some light in his darkest moment. Spikenard's most beautiful story in the Bible is the woman who wept and anointed his feet with spikenard and her tears and dried them with her hair. And the disciples were like, what? Right? But she was adoring the Savior before he was even known as the Savior. So Jesus, you know, it was cost more than a year's worth of wages, what she did. Cedarwood, um, I love this for my respiratory system, which I obviously need because I'm coughing up here. This time of year, I get a cedar chest, literally. I smell like a cedar chest. Um, it's the one thing that works the most at this time of year for me. It's very relaxing and soothing. Juniper berry, oh, juniper berry is so good for fears. In this mention in the Bible, um, people who are afraid diffuse juniper berry. Children who bed wet, juniper berry. Um, it's so good for kidneys and urinary function. Um, helps relieve tension and stress. It's great. It's mentioned in the Bible. Sandalwood, sometimes it's aloes, is actually referring to sandalwood. Um, many botanists believe that aloes were derived from sandalwood, one of the oldest incenses known to man. Its 4,000 year history includes <coughs> use as carved wood as well as distillation for its woody, fruity scent. We have Indian and Hawaiian sandalwood. They are different. You can look them up on YouTube videos to see the differences. But they're much more sustainable in Hawaii, and that's why we have to switch but they have different chemical compounds if you need to know the difference. 
<clears throat> Santa Wood may unlock emotional trauma from DNA in the cells. Santa Wood may unlock emotional trauma from DNA in the cells. I gotta tell you, I had a lot of um, PTSD from watching Mike die and being with him for those 11 days and begging God to kill him and everything that happened. Sandalwood, I, I mixed sandalwood with everything. It's like, I didn't even know that at the time. I wasn't thinking about that, but I craved it. No matter what I put on, I added sandalwood. And the Lord knew that I needed that. So um, if you have someone that you know that's in trauma, add sandalwood to their blends, whatever you make for them. Cassia. Oh, I love Cassia. But don't ever put it on your face. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> Not that I ever did that. So Cassia's very hot, oily. I want to delete it for sure. But Cinnamon and Cassia are different. They're very similar. But when you smell cinnamon buns, that's because Cassia is what we call cinnamon in our cooking. Our powder we use in our kitchen is probably Cassia because it's way cheaper. Pure cinnamon smells like a fireball or a red hot, and it's a lot more expensive. Different chemical compounds. So when you need cinnamon, go for the cinnamon. When you need cassia, go with cassia. But a lot of companies will combine the two and sell it cheaper. <laughs> That's why we love doTERRA. <laughs> so cinnamon is used in Song of Solomon a lot. It's a very nice oil in the romance blends. And it's also really good for self-confidence and things like that. <laughs> so Song of Solomon uses that cinnamon and cassia a lot. Promotes circulation, healthy immune system. So many good things. I put a drop of cinnamon under my tongue every day. It's really hot. I don't mind it. Cypress. This is the one that the ark smelled like. So if you ever want your kids to be like, here, smell the inside of Noah's Ark minus all the animals, <laughs> then you can smell, because this was what gopher wood was, was cypress. Oh, oh really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have any of you been to the Ark experience? Yeah. In it's yeah. wonderful. I recommend it. Especially if you have kids. My daughter, it was like a holy reverent thing when she realized, oh my goodness, they were the only people in here and everyone else was outside. It was big, it was big. She wanted to tell everybody about Jesus by the time we got done. And it all, Cyprus is also, Cyprus is great for anything circulatory, like rashes a lot of times. They need circulation, so add Cypress to whatever you're using for a rash, and this can help with circulation. It's also really good for water circulation, so if you're retaining a lot of fluid, Cypress is great. Um, for people whose fingers are always cold and their toes are always cold, Cypress is going to help get warmth to those appendages. Um, but from an emotional standpoint, it will start the waterworks. So if you know someone who bottles it all up and they cannot be emotional, they can start diffusing cypress and it's going to help get some of that emotion unlocked. So there were anointings during Holy Week. If you want to take a screenshot, you can look them up. I'm almost finished. Sorry, I went a few minutes over. <laughs> we started late. Wait, yeah, we did start late. But this is a long class. It's always long. Because it's Jesus, and we want to talk about the Lord, right? Everybody got it? I don't want to move it until you do. But yeah, what a great time. Easter, Christmas and Easter are good times to ponder this class and look up all these verses and be appreciative. And on your own, I recommend looking up as you're reading scripture and you see one of your oils, mentioned go to your resources and look at what it does emotionally and physically that's how i realized that how profound that myrrh was given to joseph like that he just sat there smelling it when he's getting broken away from his mother you know i wouldn't have known that if i didn't have the resources too right but the bible had left it in he left god left those details in there for a reason 
<laughs> Another thing that you can do that with, I'm trying to just give you practical things to merge your Bible time and, as a Christian with your essential oil journey. The anointing that the priests did, they, there were very specific instructions. And in one of them for cleansing the body of a very specific ailment, um, you were to put the oil <laughs> in the left hand and take the right thumb and grab the oil like this and massage it to the right earlobe, <laughs> the right thumb, and the right big toe of that person. So what did I do? I'm like, well, that's not enough for nothing because God did not just put random things in the Bible. That's for us to read. So I got my reflexology chart out, and I looked at, okay, what is the pressure point of the right earlobe, the right thumb, the right big toe? And I went, that goes perfectly with what they're praying for. Like, how do they know that without a reflexology chart? <laughs> Which came first, the chicken or the egg? All right now, we got to go back. Science is finally catching up with what God has said all along. It's usually how it works. And here's the best version of that. This is laminin. <coughs> In Colossians 1, 16 and 17. Can someone read that again? Colossians 1, 16 and 17. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Mm -hmm. We have an amazing holder together. And even in the protein molecules of our bloodstream, therein are symbols of Jesus. Um, Amazing. Revelation 22, 1 through 3. We're going to end with these two final verses. Can someone read Revelation 22, 1 through 3? It'll sound very familiar because it was also referred to, I believe, in Ezekiel. And then James 5, 13 through 16. Twenty-two, one through three. And he showed me a pure river of water, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of its street, and on either side of the river, was a tree of life which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. Leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. Mm -hmm. In James 5, 13 to 16. If any of you are suffering hardships, you should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Tonight I just want to end with that verse and your hands and your posture. All these things we talked about tonight. Can you imagine if the light of the world through us as his temples of the Holy Spirit were walking around with such extravagant grace and love for others that that, what you just read, could happen? Because it's not just go and have people pray over you. There were words of praying people going out, worshiping and singing and honoring the Lord and thanking him for the healing. But there was confession of sin with no judgment, and healing was happening. Imagine us as the representation of Jesus 
loving people no matter what. So that they didn't think that we were going to be shocked at the darkness inside, and they would actually welcome the light. That's what healing is all about. That's why we have each other, and that's why we have the Lord and His Spirit. So I hope you've been inspired tonight. I hope that you know that God is your healer, and that you will become the student and say, Lord, teach me to pray. Lord, teach me to serve you. May others be served as they're healed. May I take care of the temple that you've given me where your Holy Spirit resides. And may I walk out my life in a way that loves so extravagantly that others aren't freaked out that I'm going to be judgmental and running in the other direction so that I can be part of your healing. That's my prayer for you. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you. You probably noticed that there are some people selling a few things out in the front foyer. And I picked out a gift for Amy from Andrea's table. Um, it's a bracelet, it's leather, and you can put oil on the inside, use it as a diffuser bracelet. But I picked out one for her that says, it is well with my soul. But if you haven't um, heard, a year ago when Amy and her kids were into, a year into their grief journey, a little, um, a little more than a year ago, they put out an album called Good Grief, and it's on CD Baby, is where you can purchase it here. So there's beautiful songs that him and his well with my soul is on there. Um, with Amy singing it, she and her kids sing a mixture of songs that they wrote and also covering songs uh, by other worship artists such as Chris Tomlin. It's beautiful and I love it and I encourage you all just to read her, um, read her website blog, stories, some of the things there at amyshroyer.com. We really appreciate her giving her time. She's teaching the same class for her own team Friday and I really appreciate that she took the time to teach this for us tonight. I'm going to wrap up really quickly just with a couple of things for anyone who might be new. Please talk to the person who invited you to, to uh, learn about how you can get the discounts on doTERRA oils and the benefits of a membership. Um, also, there are some resource books. She mentioned one of them, What the Bible Says About Oils and Spices by Erica McNeil. This is a great one. There's some others listed here as well, and one of our typical resource books that we always recommend. Um, healing oil in the Bible, the chemistry of essential oils, of course, our essential life and modern essentials. And then there is a whole bibliography where a lot of the material for this study, this was actually first a study before it was a PowerPoint um, that someone created. And I am happy to share that PowerPoint with you so you can have all of the slides and all the scriptures and all of the resources. Um, just talk to me or we can maybe even start a list or something for everyone who wants me to email that to you. I just have it saved in Dropbox. So it's very quick for me to send you the link if you would like access to it. The person who created it originally <laughs> was selling it for $10 and everyone who needed to buy it from her. Um, she hit presidential diamonds and you know what? I don't care anymore. Everyone just have it. <laughs> so, so she's given us all permission to use that. And I really appreciate the work she put into it, but also the way that Amy teaches it. Like I said, it's different every time. It's beautiful. I always learn something new and I'm always tugged closer to the Lord. So thank you all for being with us tonight. If you would like to stop at any of the vendors on your way out, they'll be out there for a little while longer. If you'd like to talk to me or Amy or if you need prayer, we can hang around here um, for as long as we need to until the pastor shows up and says, hey, you're all kicked out, which probably won't be for at least another half an hour. And he probably wouldn't kick us out if we're in here praying. So <laughs> thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank <laughs> you.